welcome to the Synchronicity Podcast on your channel. <laughs> Uh-huh, number 10. Yes. Anything uh, on your radar? No, what about you? Not particularly, which, but just the fact that, 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 that we don't necessarily have anything on our radar maybe says something about um, how we may be <clears throat> nearing the end of the relevance of the spoken medium and getting <laughs> to where we are um, ready, yearning even, perhaps for something more metaversal, you know, <laughs> something denser and more information rich as a way of relating and interacting. Well. I mean, I was just trying to give space. I have something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to like exclude the metaverse in order to to bring this up. So maybe you can tie it back. Here, here, here's what it is. I thought this morning, maybe we should get rid of laws that are not universally applied, that are just randomly and with discrimination applied, and just say as evidence that they're not real valid laws because they're not being applied toward everyone. Not to say that we should apply them more, but we... <laughs> well, yeah, there's some kind of legal principle that seems to uh, equal uh, application. But do you have any in particular in mind? Um. Well, okay, so anything that uh, targets some people, if you if you experience that and you prove that, that it has been uh, a matter of profiling, for example. Mm -hmm. Maybe poor people. Yeah, or pulling people over based on their race um, or perceived skin color or whatever you're doing. Um, that... Uh, the very fact that it was selectively applied is evidence that the law is not real. The people have spoken. The, everything is spoken to say this isn't a valid law. So it can be cut. And we haven't had a way to get rid of laws, but there's a sort of voting that's already taking place, which is selective enforcement. So by, if it's been selectively enforced and targeting a group, then you can say it's an invalid law and get rid of it for everyone. And, and that could be uh, a way to take away, because I'm interested in stripping away this law because we wouldn't be able to live and not break the law. It's being selectively enforced and it's illegal for that to be the case. To, to live with that much law. So, um, yeah, we could use it as a, as a test to say it uh, can be just stricken because it's being selectively enforced. And I could see that that would be a chain reaction of various things. I think it would be good. Anyway, less law. Mm -hmm. That would also take away some of the the need for some of the uh, verbal existence. Mm -hmm. Right now, everything we do seems to have to have a proof behind it about how we did this ethically within our laws. Mm -hmm. So we're in a tremendous amount of bondage, and, and the goal is to have you throw another person under the bus, as opposed to setting us free and, and breaking these chains around us, um, which that would be the point of my suggestion. I wouldn't want to like take away. Like, you could get real extreme.
stream on this, or you could just try to do it with some common sense. Like, apparently, you didn't really need this law because you didn't enforce it for uh, you know for your group or your rich kids. Or maybe in that case, it would be like, yeah, actually, we want to keep this law. And that means that we're going to take away this um, blind eye to these rich kids doing these. I was thinking about the coming out of the nightclub and beating people up, mm. you know. Um, how were they getting away with that? Why was that happening? It was just tolerated. So in some cases, maybe people would go the opposite direction and say, yeah, we really should enforce that. And and, mm. and I always think you first, you know, when it comes to rich and powerful people, that they should be held to their laws that they create or that they lobby for. They should be the first <clears throat> ones held to those things rather than poor folks and people with struggles from the system that, you know, are are obviously not getting a slice of the pie. But, uh, well, what is law? And you got me thinking about what is law anyway, altogether? And could we um, operate more on a principle of just making sure that people are not victimizing anyone or, you know, um, asserting power over anyone? law a very good framework in which to do that. Well, with a corporation emitting uh, smoke over a neighborhood, um, I have heard the argument from a politician that we should all just be able to sue and insist that that harm not be done to our personal space because we had a house in that area, but that that assumes um, the male white landowner model that began this nightmare uh, in our constitution as who is a person. Um, I don't think it would be very easy for someone who didn't have property, uh, who lived on a sidewalk to say, I'm being harmed by this pollution of this landowning entity because um, we have rights to clean air and water and so community rights uh, rights to of nature is one I've heard um, there's yeah I would say community rights um, and the commons you know commons, air, water, all sorts of But certainly it would be a step in the right direction to take away laws that are not uh, enforced to everyone. And, 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 you know, maybe that law would be would make sense if it were taken away from a national level and put onto states or taken away from a state level and put onto cities who opted in um, and you know even neighborhoods communities um, so when you say it's not applied equally if it's a if it's an area that decides to apply it that they're that it's applying it to every person and there's some collective agreement there that's fair that's democratic uh, you know, I don't. I don't want to say I want a national homogenous law. But I, I just would take away. I would leave the le the least level where it can be uh, non selectively applied. At the you know, just break it apart where it's being um, selectively applied.
Anyway, back to the metaverse. <laughs> Communicating without without words is one of quicker, right? Having ideas and concepts shared without being translated clunkily into words, kind of similar to how you can read without necessarily sounding everything out. Some people can. Can you? <clears throat> well, sure, sometimes. I mean, I'm sure you can't speak to it in certain contexts. Like, you get a form letter and you're, and you're just wondering if, what the gist of it is and you skim through and see. But I mean, like, if you read a story, do you sound it out in your mind or do you um, read on a different level? less of a speech function. days where I really sound everything out and I have to go back and go back to the sentence that I was just reading because I, my mind wanders so there seems to be a correlation between how much my mind wanders and how much I rely on that speech um, when I when I'm focused and relaxed I don't think I I have to reread sentences and I don't sound them out in my metaverse mind well, whether you're sounding it out or not, you're translating the um, images of the letters into some kind of image of the, the meaning that it refers to. So a, a visual, um, a graphical way of communicating would seem to um, uh, avoid that, that step. I just thought, I thought it was kind of an analogy. It's not it's not uh, the same, but it, it, it there's a clunkiness that I can relate to, uh, where I felt very free when I was reading a book and just enjoying it, and I didn't find myself tripping on mental pronunciation and tracking with the use of my speech center, tracking to. You know, and some some books are going to give themselves because they don't have the mental picture. They're they're telling you something that maybe you find a little boring or you know maybe disturbing and it slows me down. But you know, I remember a good example for me was Harry Potter. I loved reading Harry Potter. The first book was uh, amazing, and I I read them before I saw the movie, so I. Uh, think I think I read it right before I saw the movie I think I, I thought I'm going to see the movie I better go read this book now before I miss out on the opportunity to read it first seems like not sure for sure but anyway regardless when I read it I got really swept up in it and I did not I was just seeing as I was reading. That'd be neat to do in communication. To not even necessarily put a word on it, but to understand where someone else is going. And we may be going <laughs> away any minute, depending on probably getting close. Oh, got to look at the time, yeah. I double booked myself and I just have to make an appearance. <laughs> so, yes, it's time, but, um, oh, shoot. I guess I do have to go to this meeting. Okay, so we will wrap up our mini podcast. And then we'll maybe take this keyboard out and put a couch and 
figure a way to make the, the keyboard easily progress. For next time. Yeah. Yeah. Or not not necessarily a couch, maybe these chairs, but um mm -hmm. but uh to use this space better. Perhaps. Because the weather is cold. Mm-hmm. Some different backdrops. <coughs> Do they heat in this place at all? No, but I have a heater. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right, everybody. Love you. Yeah, bye.